We have also a lot of other folks working on Hub. We have the Earth Hub people. Can you tell us a little bit about where you are? All right, thank you. Yeah, so as I said, my name is Antonim Tavangu, and I work for the East African Regional and Thematic Hub. Um, I have Winnie as well. She's working with us as a co team. So this hub um, is comprised of 11 communities uh, that are geographically located in East Africa. And uh, we had some background history in working together, but it was not something official. So we thought it was okay if we did some proper research to understand better what are the challenges facing our, our region and how do people see a hub to be a solution to those challenges? So we had to do a research. The research was complete. We got some feedback from them. Um, and some, somebody was asking like, uh, is this a physical thing or is it a virtual thing? Uh, luckily in our community, people said they want something hybrid, which will be both like a physical and virtual. And where are we right now? Um, we are moving to the implementation phase, but still we are in initial planning uh, phase where we want to answer some pending questions like, okay, if it's a physical thing, how can that be? Uh, how will it look like and how can it can work? So I'll be passing this mic to Winnie. In case you have something to add, please welcome. Thanks, Anthony. I will actually pass the mic to Derek. <laughs> <laughs> Derek has also, um, is also a, uh, has also been a community facilitator in the Earth Hub. So maybe Derek, you can tell us um, just some of the challenges that communities in the 11 countries like communicated when they say we need the Earth as a hub for our region. What are some of the things that they are looking in this hub? Like what do they want? Um, what is the role that the community see Earth will will serve. Uh, yes, thank you so much. Uh, happy enough, I'm not going to, to, to pass over the mic <laughs> to another person. Okay, yes, uh, so I think one of the challenges that we, we came across that most communities are addressing, uh, one is that before uh, there was, uh, I would call it a channel, there was no clear channel for communities. So for instance, if I'm, I'm in a community, if I'm coming from um, a country, where there is no Wikimedia community. If, um, if I want to, to initiate a community in that country, how do I go about it? Is there a, a place where I go and I, I, I register? Uh, is there a group of people who are there to, 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 to mentor me and teach me? Or it's a process that I have to go through alone? So I think that was the first challenge. Because so many communities, uh, I would say like now, the community where I come from, the Wikimedia is a group Rwanda. I got to know about the Wikimedia movement in Uganda as a student. But imagine if I no, never got a chance to go to Uganda, maybe there would be a community, but in any other way. Uh, I think the community in Tanzania, I'm not so sure how it got, um, you got to know the information, but I think it is. Uh, there was a Wikimedia staff who came to Tanzania to talk about Wikimedia, that's why we, we met him. Oh, so you see, Yep. You see, so many communities came to exist, but in different ways, you know, and ways which are not structured. And by structured, I mean, uh, maybe a person would feel, will have the need to begin a community, but not so sure of how to go about it. So I think this is a challenge that most communities have. The second one is um, the capacity building. There is having a need to begin a community in Rwanda, but there, there is also having skills needed for, for, for that community to to, to be established, fine. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes, so I was saying, uh, yes, there is, there is having a need to begin or to establish a community, fine, but also the skills. Do I have what it takes to really um, uh, begin th that community and also make sure it is uh, operating sustainably? So uh, I think that is also another thing, another challenge that most communities have. Yes, communities are there, but how do we operate in a sustainable manner? I think that is another challenge. And then um, another challenge that all these communities, all most of these communities are, are facing is um, 
developing their, their, their local languages. Yes, when uh, most of us came to the, to the Wikimedia movement thinking for you to, to be productive and effective, you should be speaking either French or English. So, um, so we are being challenged. Most resources are existing in English, French. So how about uh, people who are speaking Swahili only? How do they get initiated to this um, great movement and they actively participate? So the language uh, issue, the, the language barriers, I think it is something that most of these communities are facing. Yeah, so I think these are some of the big challenges that we realized we, we came across from these communities. Thank you, Derek. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I think that this is where uh, the, yeah, thank you. I'm still tall and they, they still ask me to stand up. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that what comes here is something that was written in the chat by uh, Jeko, uh, that this is a, a level, the hubs are a level between the foundation and the local communities. They are organized, they can be organized, but they still are local, they understand the local communities, and again, they can cater to the local languages, they can cater to local culture, and I think that's uh, one of the beauties of hubs that we can have. As I said, as, as I said when I spoke first time, I think that all we are saying are, is, is true, so like, pick and choose what's, what's most important for your hub, and if it is the language development, the development of tools or materials or manuals, training materials for your community. If this is important, that's your way to go in a hub, I think. Who was next? I just wanted to make it clear that when you say creating communities, do you mean creating editor communities or creating, uh, are you talking about creating affiliates? I was referring to creating affiliates. Thank yes. You. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Back to you. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe also one last thing to add um, around the needs of. Um, oh. I forgot that I, I even need to stand probably on the seat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So one of the other needs that we had um, was the need for. Um, representation. So one other thing that is also like an, a, a culture among the East African communities. So, you know, ideally there is the existing East African community that is not a, a Wikimedia community. And one of the values of the EAC, as we call it, it's a, it's a spirit of collaboration. And it's that spirit that has inspired a lot of um, communities in the East African region, Wikimedia communities to be coming. As Derek mentioned, uh, Wikimedia Uganda, U Wikimedia Rwanda was birthed from Wikimedia Uganda. It's the case for Wikimedia South Sudan. It's the case for Wikimedia Kenya as well. So um, that also the need to collaborate, the need to uh, grow that spirit of collaboration and mentorship is also one of the things that communities are looking forward to in a way that that space is structured. And even when communities in the region are being represented, there's, there's sort of, a, a, for lack of a better word, there's sort of a, a, a big brother who is projecting the needs of these communities in unison so that it's not just a few individuals who are representing the region or communities, but yeah, there's a whole unit all together. Thank you so much, Winnie. So in the room, we have Pelagi Anjau. Yeah, she's part of, uh, she's coming from East Africa and she has been